In a normal household in Japan, a mother is dutifully cooking breakfast for her child about to go to school. She shouts at her daughter, Siu Hajin, to get up from bed and have breakfast. After stretching for a bit and looking at the clock, Hajin gets up and starts her morning routine. She splashes water on her face to wake herself up, asks her mom where her clothes are, wears her uniform, and lastly, puts on some makeup. She is about to leave and go to school, but before she does, she asks her mom one thing, had she seen her jujitsu uniform? Her mom answers her question, but upon seeing her face, she points out to her daughter that she really does care about Sijun. Heijin nervously asks her what she's saying, but her father, who overhears their conversation, asks her if Lim Sejin is still her crush. If so, he's very disappointed in her. Heijin is getting annoyed at all the teasing by her parents, so she asks her dad for some money, grabs her jujitsu uniform, and heads to school. A little while later, Heijin is ringing the doorbell at Sejin's place, but his father sleepily opens the door instead. She asks him where Sejin is, but the confused father points out that Sejin already left 20 minutes ago. Annoyed that he left without her, Hejin thanks him and runs after Sejin. She finally sees Sejin after a bit of running and quickly puts him in a headlock, annoyingly yet affectionately calling him Piggy. The large and chubby guy named Lim Sejin explains that he went on ahead because he wants to go to school slowly. Hejin starts inviting Sejin to do jujitsu with her, but Sejin just stares at her. He then suddenly pulls her close just as a passing car almost hits her. Sejin then scolds her for carrying two bags in the first place and carries her jujitsu bag for her. Meanwhile, Hajin blushes and catches up with Sejin talking about anything and nothing. At school, Sejin goes to his seat when he notices that the guy sitting in front of him is getting bullied and extorted for money again by a thug named Jun Siok. It was a day like any other, but something compelled Sejin to watch the altercation in front of him that day. When Jun Siok starts slapping the kid when the kid refuses to buy them bread, Sejin knows that he shouldn't get involved, but he can't help himself. He slaps some bread into Jun Siok's mouth and slams him into the ground. Sejin realizes he might have overdone it and asks Jun Siok if he's okay. Jun Siok spits out the bloody bread and asks him what's wrong with him. Sejin tries to explain that he just got annoyed that Jun Siok kept asking for bread, so he gave him some. Jun Siok gets annoyed at this and starts pummeling Sejin's face. But after a while he gets scared since Sejin is still standing, seemingly built like a rock. He picks up a chair and tries to hit Sejin with it, but Sejin also just dodges out of the way. The door then opens, and Hajin walks in wanting to hang out with Sejin. Hajin sees Sejin's injured face and Sejin quickly gets nervous. He tries to talk to her, but she just walks up to Jun Siok and asks him if he did that to Sejin. Sejin tries to explain that he hit first, but Hajin suddenly tackles Jun Siok to the ground. In a coffee shop in the city, Hajin and Sejin's fathers meet to catch up with each other. Sejin's dad shares that Hajin woke him up that morning and then ran away really fast. They reminisce about the past when the young Sejin kept getting picked on and Hajin beat the bullies up for him. Sejin's dad asks if Hajin is still beating up boys nowadays, but Hajin's father narrates how his daughter is actually very gentle now on the inside that she can't even kill a single bug. At that very moment in school, Sejin tackled Jun Siok to the ground and moved to put him in a stranglehold. Sejin tries to pull her off of Jun Siok, but Hajin continues to threaten him for hurting Sejin. As Sejin successfully drags Hajin off the bully and out of the room, Jun Siok angrily glares at them and promises that they will pay for what they've done. Later, another thug named Jai Siok barges into Sejin's classroom looking for him. Upon seeing Sejin, he asks Jun Siok if he really got beaten up by a fat person. Sejin apologizes for it, but Jai Siok just slaps him in the face. He tells Sejin that he should fight him instead. However, Sejin just cowers and apologizes, promising to never do it again. Jai Siok finally gets the hint and leaves the classroom. As they were walking away, Jun Siok asks if he's really going to leave like that. After school, Sejin and Hajin are walking home together with Jai Siok watching them from afar. The next day, Sejin is sitting in his classroom when another student tells him that he should go to Hajin's class. Why? Well, Hajin had just been bathed in ink after a trap exploded in her desk. She tries to ask her classmates who did it but they all nervously turn away, telling her that they didn't see anything. Hajin is shaking in anger when Sejin just wraps her in his own uniform and advises that they should first go clean up. Jun Siok, who was watching the commotion, gets annoyed since Sejin didn't even show any emotion to what they just did. 
Later at his own classroom, the kid sitting in front of Seijin apologizes since they are getting targeted by bullies just because Seijin saved him. Seijin smiles and tells him that it's not his fault. He walks out of the classroom and angrily marches to the real person who is at fault. He barges into Jai Suk's classroom where he and his goons are hanging out, and Seijin asks him to apologize to Hajin and pay for her uniform. Jai Siak feigns not knowing what he's talking about and then taunts Seijin, asking him what he'll do if he really did it. Seijin admits that he did think really hard over what he'd do if Jai Siak apologized, but now that he didn't, he doesn't have to worry about it. Jun Siak thought that he's making fun of them, so he tried to punch him, but Seijin beat him to it and sent his head into the wall with a powerful punch. Jun Siak, bleeding from his nose, yells to his friends to go kill Seijun. One tries to punch him, so Seijin just sweeps him off of his feet and blasts him away. Another manages to land a hit on him, but Seijin just endures the punch, tackles the guy, and slams him to the ground. He stands back up panting while Jun Siuk is shocked that he's actually good at fighting. Meanwhile, Jai Siuk just gives him applause. He asks Seijin if he's finished warming up, settles on a wrestling stance, and then tells Seijin to fight him. After a while, Seijin is panting heavily, but he can't seem to hit Jai Siuk. Jai Siuk points out that Seijin's getting slower and slower, and that he can even dodge him with his hands behind his back. Seijin stops to catch his breath and Jai Siak tells him that if he gets on his knees, he'll forgive him and his girlfriend. Seijin rejects his offer and replies that he's talking too much. However, this was just to distract Jai Siak as Seijin quickly tackles him into a surprise takedown. But Jai Siak smiles and puts his arm around Seijin's neck. Seijin thought he'd be winning once he took Jai Siak down and put his weight on it, but he suddenly could not breathe. Jai Siak had put him in a chokehold with his arms around his neck and his legs around his body. He was about to pass out when Hajin suddenly barges into the scene and kicks Jai Siak in the face and off of Seijin. Jai Siak can't believe he got hit by a girl, so Jun Siak shares that Hajin has been doing martial arts since she was young. Jai Siak dismisses this since she's still a girl and grabs Hajin by the hair. He is about to tell her off when he notices Seijin mouthing off that he should run away. This confuses Jai Siuk and Heijin finally speaks up to ask him if he hadn't been beaten up by a girl before. Jai Siuk gets angry at her audacity and punches her, but she suddenly weaves out of his punch and uses his own momentum to slam him into the ground. Before he can even recover, Heijin puts his arm in an armbar and starts breaking it. Jai Siuk tries to tap out, but Heijin tells him that bullies can't tap out. He starts apologizing to Heijin and owning up to all his mistakes, so Hajin finally lets him go and warns them to never bully others again. She then helps Seijin leave the classroom, while Jun Siuk asks Jai Siuk what they should do now since they still haven't extorted the money they need from the other students. Jai Siuk glares at the departing Hajin and shares that he has a fun idea. Later, Hajin and Seijin are walking home, and Hajin asks him if he's really okay. She points out that he couldn't even get out of the hold earlier so he should study jujitsu with her. Seijin finally gets annoyed with her pushy attitude and decides to go home, while Hajin laments that he isn't going to take her to the gym. She just wanted to stay with him longer, but she couldn't say that to him. At home, Seijin texts Hajin to ask if she arrived at the gym, but he's still annoyed at what happened earlier, so he decides to sleep it off. A few hours earlier, his father suddenly barges into his room and wakes him up. He asks Seijin why he's not picking up his phone and Seijin sees that his phone really is full of missed calls. Seijin's dad then sadly tells him that something bad has happened to Hajin. Seijin rushes to the hospital emergency room where Hajin's parents are waiting for the doctor's news. Despite him bathing in sweat and his feet bloody from running, he quickly asks them about Hajin's condition and about what happened. Meanwhile, his father catches up to him and gives him some slippers to wear. Seijin tries to explain how he failed to go with Hajin to the gym, and she had to go alone when a detective from the Department of Criminal Affairs suddenly interrupts him and asks to speak with him. He leads Seijin to another room where he explains to him that he's in charge of the case and they presume that it's a group assault. They still don't know who may have been involved so they are asking Seijin if he knows anyone who has a bad relationship with her. Seijin abruptly remembers the bullies Hajin had beaten up yesterday, so he quickly relays the names of Jai Siuk and Jun Siuk. He then asks the detective what happened who narrates to him that Hajin was found in an alley. After being assaulted and falling unconscious, she was abandoned in the alley. The right side of her face got hit pretty hard, and her left knee was grievously injured. They presume that since she got hit by fists, 
her knee was probably twisted using a martial arts technique. Seijin then recalls that Jai Siuk also knows jujitsu, and the president promises to investigate it. A few hours later, Hajin's surgery finally finishes, and the doctor reports to her parents that it has gone well. If she works hard to rehabilitate her left knee, there won't be issues with her daily life. However, he also warns them that the mental after effects might be more serious than physical trauma. In the distance, Sejin is eavesdropping with his face buried in his hands. A few moments later, they were able to visit Hajin's room, and upon seeing her bruised and injured face, Sejin tears up and heartens in resolve. A few days later, Sejin angrily shouts at the detective handling Hajin's case named Detective Jang after he concludes that Jai Siuk and Jun Siuk were not the culprits. Detective Jang explains that the CCTV at the office tell next to the alley where Siu Hajin was found was broken and scheduled for repair. While he was explaining, Sejin sneakily glances at the detective's case file and sees that he was talking about the gold office telephone. Detective Jang quickly hides the case file and advises Sejin not to suddenly visit the police station anymore. Thus, Sejin declares that he'll take care of it himself. Detective Jang watches as he leaves and advises his subordinate to find out what Sejin is doing in his spare time. Later that night, at the gold office tell, Jai Siuk and Jun Siuk are leaving with girls in their arms. They are planning to go smoke in the alley when they noticed that someone else was already waiting there. It was Sejin who slowly stood up and asked them if they were the ones who hurt Ha Jin. Jai Siuk can't hold back his laughter and teases Sejin's lines, but Sejin just punches him right in the face. He also slaps Jun Siuk who is shaking in terror. He is about to punch him again when he notices Jai Siuk charging at him. Jai Siuk ducks under his punch and grabs hold of his leg. He then uses that leverage to bring Sejin down. Jai Siuk then moves to Sejin's face and starts pummeling him. He tells him that this time, he'll do it right just like his girlfriend's leg. Meanwhile, Sejin cannot move his arms because it was pinned by Jai Siuk sitting on top of him. After delivering some powerful blows to his face, Jai Siuk performs an arm bar on Sejin's arm, threatening to break it. But before he can, a long-haired dude with no shirt interrupts them and orders Jai Siok to let it go. As the man approaches Jai Siok, he immediately senses that the man is dangerous. Therefore, he quickly lets go of Sejin and backs off. He asks him who he is to interrupt them when Sejin was the first one to deliver a punch. But the guy just tells him to leave. Jai Siok notices that the girls and Jun Siok were still watching them, so not wanting to look like a coward in front of them, he slaps the man on the shoulder. The man asks him if he really wants to see his skills as he faces Jai Siok. Jai Siok shakes in terror, but the man just abruptly pulls out a cell phone and calls the police. Jai Siok quickly leaves before the police can arrive, leaving Sejin with the man. With tears falling from his eyes, Sejin thanks the dude. The dude sits beside him and calls him Piggy, Hajin's friend. He then introduces himself as Hajin's exercise friend. Sejin asks him how he knew him, and the man explains that Hajin always shows his pictures to them. He then asks if Hajin hasn't yet woken up, and Sejin shakes his head. The man then tells him that the bully earlier wasn't the one who hurt Hajin. This piques Sejin's attention, and he asks the guy how he knows that. However, the guy just replies that it's a gut feeling. He then shows Sejin a flyer to his jujitsu gym, and then tells him that if he attacks the guy earlier a hundred times, he'll just lose a hundred times. If he wants to beat him, he must learn. A few days later, in front of the key jujitsu gym, Seijin is pondering what he should do. He doesn't have enough money to actually enroll in the gym, and he's also nervous that there might be a lot of scary people. Two guys hear his muttering and surprise him by answering his questions. They introduce themselves as members of the gym, and then start dragging him inside. While getting pushed inside, Seijin can't help but think that there are a lot of people like Hajin there. He then notices that the long-haired guy who invited him there was sleeping on the mat. The two men call the long-haired guy Jason Hyung and wake him up. They notice that Jason already knows Sejin, and when he explains that he was Hajin's piggy, they finally realize why he looks so familiar. Sejin nervously backs out of the gym and tries to explain that he has no money but another man, the owner, locking the way asks him how much he's lacking. The owner tells him that students get a discount, but Sejin insists he really has no money. The owner starts offering lower and lower tuition until one member raises his hand and tells them that he has an idea. They should allow him to go to the gym for free. The owner tries to protest, but the member asks him how long he'll do deliveries just to pay the gym's rent. 
Instead, they should use Seijin as a promotion of their gym for their weight loss program. After all, Seijin is tall and has a nice face, so if he loses weight, he'll be the perfect model for them. They can portray Jiu-Jitsu as a good program to make both mind and body healthy for the whole family. The others are intrigued by his plan and the owner finally agrees. Seijin voices out that he didn't agree yet the others are already planning his workout and diet routine for the next three months. Seijin tries to tiptoe away, but Jason grabs him by the head and orders him to get in his jiu-jitsu uniform. Seijin realizes that this time, he is truly dead. Three months later, the members of the Ki Jiu-Jitsu gym are panting heavily after a long sparing session. They complain that Seijin is hard to deal with because of his size and height. They then remember that Seijin's three months are almost up and they congratulate him for a job well done. Seijin smiles and replies that he still has a long way to go. Now fit and handsome, he tells them that this is just the beginning. Not only has Seijin lost a ton of weight, but the members also compliment Seijin for gaining two stripes on his jiu-jitsu belt, proof that he is learning. The owner and their instructor then instructed them to line up and ended their lessons for today. Meanwhile, Jason tells Seijin that they will now work on his muscle strength. The others are aghast by his brutal training methods, and even Seijin complains that he still hasn't gotten his breath back yet. Jason asks him if they should just have a more brutal session tomorrow, and Seijin quickly changes his mind and proceeds with the workout. As the sun is beginning to set, Seijin is also barely finishing his muscle training by doing one-arm pull-ups at the park. Jason asks him why he seems so weak today, and Seijin reminds him they had just finished jujitsu. However, Jason demonstrates he can do it, and Seijin calls him a monster. After training, Seijin is eating some ice cream when Jason asks him how Hajin is now doing. Seijin gets sad and admits that he's not sure. Hajin woke up 12 days later after she was brought to the hospital, and Seijin quickly rushed to the hospital upon hearing the news. But after seeing Hajin's eyes, Seijin stopped. It looked like her eyes were telling him not to come any closer. Her father then later told him that she didn't want to talk because of the shock, and she also told her therapist that she didn't want to meet anybody except family. A few weeks later, Hajin's family moved to focus on her rehabilitation. Jason asks what the police said and Sijin shares that he doubts they made any progress. Jason then also asks if he's really going to search for the people who hurt Hajin and reminds him that martial arts are not used to hurt people. He then leaves, telling Sijin that he still must decide what to do in his life, but Sijin had already decided three months ago. A few days later at school, Jai Siuk and Jun Siuk are again planning their extortion racket and Jun Siuk promises to gather all their victims again. Later at school, Jai Siuk receives a call from Jun Siuk informing him that he had gathered the victims. A girl then approaches him and tells him that someone wants to see him on the roof. Jai Siuk asks who it is, but the girl replies that she doesn't know. But he's so handsome that she wants to get his number. In the bathroom, all the bully kids are now being extorted money by Jun Siuk. The bathroom door suddenly opens and a new guy walks in. Jun Siuk tries to tell the new guy to use another bathroom, but the guy greets them as if he knew them. The guy then tells the bully kids to quickly leave because he's there to clean up the trash. It was Seijun. A bully walks up to Seijun and asks if he wants to get bullied too, but Seijun grabs him by the hair and punches him. He then shouts at the bully kids to get out, and they quickly file out the door. Jun Siuk tries to stop them, but Seijin kicks him in the stomach. The other bullies now try to rush at Seijin, and he calmly dodges their punches and delivers his own. Jun Siuk asks what his problem with them is, but Seijin just grabs him by the throat and orders him to tell Jai Siuk that he's ready to fight again. On the rooftop, Jai Siuk is confused because no one was there to meet him. His phone rings, and when he picks it up, it is Jun Siuk. He asks him if he has already collected the money, but Jun Siuk confusingly warns him that Seijin is coming for him. He was about to go to the bathroom when the rooftop door abruptly opened, hitting him in the face. Seijin apologizes and asks him how he's been. With his nose bleeding, Jai Siuk asks him if he's the one who called him to the rooftop and why. In response, Seijin just punches him in the face. Jai Siuk smiles and asks him if he really thinks he's going to win just because he lost some weight. However, Seijin punches him again. Jai Siak gets annoyed that he's getting interrupted and punches Seijin too. He tries to follow this up with another attack, but Seijin calmly rotates and hits him with his elbow. Next, Jai Siak tries to tackle Seijin's feet from under him, but Seijin is expecting this and uses his knee to counterattack. 
Seijin compliments Jai Seok for his endurance, who is now on his back waiting for Seijin to attack him again. Jai Seok's position reminds Seijin of his previous sparring with Jason. Multiple times, Jason just chokes him with his legs while he tries to escape. He usually tapped out and complains to Jason that he'd rather be learning techniques like arm bars, but Jason tells him that he first needs to learn how to break his opponent's guard and improve his position. That's why he must learn guard pass, the most basic move. Jason lies down on his back again and orders Seijin to try attacking him again. Seijin asks him if this does really happen in real life. However, Jason admits to him that he won't be able to beat Dai Siak with just Jiu-Jitsu. If he really wants to beat him, they need to plan, not just using Jiu-Jitsu but mixed martial arts too. Jason was the one who told him that due to Seijin's height, his opponent would probably tackle him to the ground. That's why he should respond with a knee attack when he's being tackled. When his opponent has no choice left, he'll go in a guard position called the flower. People who don't know jujitsu won't be able to respond to it, so Seijin must hide the fact that he learned it. That's when Seijin must attack one thing, the thighs. Back in the present, all of Jason's predictions became true for Seijin. Even now, Jai Siok is already in the flower guard position. With that, he follows Jason's advice and kicks Jai Siok's thighs as hard as he can. Jai Siok cries out in pain from Seijin's kick, but before he can even recover, Seijin already grabbed hold of his feet and pushed it sideways. This leaves Jai Siok open to attack and Seijin quickly takes the opportunity to knee him in the stomach. Jai Siok asks him where he learned jujitsu, but Jason doesn't answer. In his mind, he found it easy to fight Jai Siok when compared to the monster Jason Hyung. Jai Siok asks him if this is about Hajin. He smiles and starts taunting Seijin, narrating how Hajin was all energetic at the start, but when she got hit, she starts begging for her life and covering her face. He also mentions how Seijin didn't answer his cell phone on the day Hajin got beaten up. If only he walked her to the gym or answered her calls, then all this wouldn't have happened. Hajin's beat up face flashed in Seijin's mind. Jai Siuk capitalizes on his distraction and slams Seijin back into the ground. He then jumps and stomps on Seijin's face. Seijin manages to block it, so Jai Siuk continues his attack. With Seijin on the ground, he manages to kick Jai Siuk in the face and at the same time grab hold of his arms and legs. It was a guarding technique called Spider Guard. With Jai Siuk now immobilized, Seijin tells him that he knows he wasn't alone when he hurt Hajin. Seijin then grabs Jai Siuk's leg and kicks him at the same time, bringing him down while he's now the one standing over him. Jai Siuk tries to guard again, but the thigh kick earlier robbed him of his strength. This allows Seijin to fully mount on Jai Seok's body and pummels his face with Jai Seok unable to defend himself. Seijin then continues telling Jai Seok that he knows Jai Seok wasn't strong enough to defeat Hajin. That's why he's going to find each and every one of them and return her pain a hundredfold. Now fully beaten, Jai Seok cryingly begs Seijin to stop after he cannot see any more from his left eye. However, Seijin doesn't stop and instead asks him who his accomplices are. When Jai Siok doesn't answer, he punches him again. Jai Siok cries out that he doesn't know anything, but Seijin just puts his arm in an Americana, a submission technique that puts immense pressure on the opponent's shoulder. Seijin starts putting pressure on Jai Siok's shoulder and explains that he has two options, he can either tell him who was involved and he'll let him go or he can break his shoulder. Jai Siok threatens him by asking if he can handle the aftermath of what he's doing but Seijin answers back if they thought about the aftermath of Hajin's injury. Jai Siok finally realizes that Seijin is serious, and he cries out a name, Sun Do Hyun. He was a third-year student who was there that day. Seijin asks if there's anyone else, and Jai Siok yells out that that wasn't the deal. The deal was for Seijin to let him go. However, if Seijin starts putting pressure on his hold again, and Jai Siok was forced to reveal that there were also people from other schools. He's just a small fry, so he doesn't know anything else. At that moment, a teacher arrives and sees their altercation. Jai Siok laughs and tells Seijin that his life is over now since he's clearly the victim. But Seijin just kicks him again in the face and replies that he should wait until the end to see whose life really is over. A few minutes later, Jai Siok's dad is shouting at the principal demanding Seijin to be kicked out of the school. Meanwhile, Seijin is just pondering whether the gathering with other schools is an alliance. However, he first needs to recover and find Du Hyun. Dai Siok's mother silently enters the room and approaches Si Jun. She then suddenly attempts to slap Si Jun who was surprised and instinctively parries her hand. This surprises the mother who starts shouting at him. 
Thankfully, Sijin's father finally arrives and goes to check on his son. Jai Suk's mother shouts at his father, demanding that Sijin gets punished for putting her son in the emergency room. His father bows his head and apologizes, but the mother continues crying out for Sijin to be expelled. The principal insists that he'll first create a violence committee to oversee the whole thing, while Sijin's father asks if they can first talk to the kids to figure out what happened. However, the mother doesn't agree with them and continues shouting for the bastard who hurt his son to be expelled. After a while, Sijin's father gets fed up with his son being called a bastard and stands up to the mother. This causes the father to defend his wife and points out how dare a jobless-looking gangster father like him do that to his wife. He shouts out that he's going to use his connection to the principal to kick out Sijin. Sijin's father asks if he's really going to use his personal connections, so he also makes a call of his own. The principal is surprised since he recognized the voice on the other end of the call as the chairman of the school. The chairman exchanges pleasantries with Sijin's father and Sijin's father asks him for a favor. After a while, Sijin's father hands his phone over to the principal. Jai Suk's father assumes that he's just bluffing them, but when he sees the principal's scared and nervous face, he figures that it must be true. Later, Sijin and his father are dragging home when Sijin apologizes for causing trouble at school. Because of him, his father was even forced to ask a favor from the chairman. His father asks him if this is the reason why Sijin's been working out every day and Sijin cannot answer. He assures him that he'll always be there to talk, but also warns Sijin that violence cannot be justified in any way. Sijin asks him why he's not angry, so his father admits that he trusts Sijin and that he promised his mom he'll raise Sijin right. A few days later, the other guys from the gym are curious about what happened to Sijin's face, but Sijin tells them that he fell while motorcycling with his dad. They believe him and postpone their plan of using Sijin as their model for the gym, but the owner also warns Sijin that using jujitsu outside of self-defense would make him a loser for life. The others start teasing him for his cool line, and they continue their lesson for the day. After their lesson, they decide to do a couple of sparing matches. Sijin was confident that he might be able to hold his own now, but he easily gets defeated and disarmed by the others. After their spar, Sijin asks where Jason is, and it turns out he went out to hand promotional flyers. Meanwhile, they ask if Sijin has already spoken to Hajin yet, but Sijin just gets sad and replies he couldn't. This prompts the guy to share that Hajin used to talk about him all the time, from the moment she entered the gym, during sparing, while changing clothes, and up to the time when she leaves. If Hajin had to wait for one person, she would definitely pick Sijin. At school, Jai Siak reports to his boss, the third year Dukian, about how he failed to collect the money from his classmates. He narrates how this one guy named Seijin had interrupted their operation because of Hajin. He also explains how Seijin suddenly lost weight and is now good at jujitsu. Jai Siuk acknowledges his excuse and starts removing his clothes. He then asks Jai Siuk how often he's training himself and challenges him to a spar so he can check his skills. A few scenes later, Jun Siuk is holding his bloody face and admits defeat to Jai Siuk. However, Jai Siuk tells him they'll only stop when he wants to stop and sends a punch right at Jun Siuk's side. He then sends him to the ground in an unconscious heap. Afterward, he orders Jun Siuk to collect the money and bring Sijin to him tomorrow. If he cannot do both, he'll be his next sparing partner. With terror in his face, Jun Siuk realizes that he'll soon be dead then. Meanwhile, Sijin is patiently waiting in another neighborhood in front of an apartment complex. Two individuals exit the building and it was Hajin and her mom. Hajin's mom sees him and Sijin proceeds to politely greet the two of them. Hajin looks at him and then tells him that he should follow her to a nearby cafe. Her mom mentions to Sijin how Hajin was reacting strangely and it's probably because of him coming today. Meanwhile, Sijin stares at Hajin walking with her crutches pondering how she looks sick and yet at the same time, a heroine of a tragedy. At the cafe, Hajin asks him why he suddenly called and even invited her to meet all of a sudden and Seijin apologizes for only contacting her now. He tells her how he's been learning jujitsu now and all the guys in the gym are missing her. They also talk about school, but Hajin tells him that it's a waste of time for her and that she'll just take a special exam instead. They start teasing each other and Seijin was glad that she looks better than he thought. He remembers how Detective Jang told him that Hajin didn't remember what happened that day due to trauma, but it might return someday. Meanwhile, Hajin is blushing at the way Seijin is staring at her. Seijin was about to ask her if she remembers anything from her attack now, but a customer suddenly closes the bathroom door with a loud bang, 
interrupting him. To his horror, the sudden sound had actually adversely affected Hajin, who was now badly shaking and hunched over crying. He tries to help and console her, but she just shouts at him to not touch her and to call her mom. That's when Sejin realized that Hajin wasn't really okay, but was still fighting her inner demons. Thus, Sejin's resolve heartens on what he must do. The next day at school, Jun Siak is back at their classroom extorting money from his classmates. Sejin scarily asks him if he knows the third year Du Qian, and if he does, go lead him to him. In the third year's classroom, Du Qian is dutifully studying when a classmate comes up to him and invites him to hang out with girls after class. Du Qian rejects the offer, mentioning that he must go to the gym since the college trouts are just around the corner. Out of nowhere, Jun Siuk gets kicked into the room in a loud crash by Si Jun. He then walks to Du Hian and asks him if it's him. Du Hian's classmate shouts at their rude underclassman, but Du Hian tells him it's fine. Thus, Si Jun then asks him what happened that day to Hajin. Du Hian tries to act like he doesn't know who he's talking about, so Si Jun pulls out his phone and reveals that he already recorded Jai Siak saying his name. Du Hian asks him if he's going to the police but Sejin admits he doesn't want to get the police involved either because he plans to find each and every one of those who hurt Hajin and pay them back with his own hands. Du Hian can't help but laugh at Sejin's confident declaration. He kind of likes Sejin's attitude so he decides to tell him everything. However, he wants something in exchange. Sejin will either collect the money from his classmates or he can try beating Du Hian up like he plans to do. With this threat, Du Hian aims a punch right at Sejin's jaw but stops at the last second. Sejin was shocked that he wasn't even able to comprehend the attack. Du Hian then backs down and smiles, telling him that they can't do it now because their teacher is here. Instead, he'll wait for Sejin's answer tomorrow. After school, Du Hian and his friends are walking when his phone suddenly vibrates. It was a text from his mom telling him to sleep at a friend's house because the creditors are at their house again. Du Hian's mood suddenly changes and he tells his friends that they should cancel their appointment for the day. In another street, Sijin was thinking about Du Hian's punch earlier. He wonders if that kind of punch can only be earned through boxing. He thought he had good eyes, but it was faster than he thought. If it comes to a fight, he'll get hit even before he can use jujitsu. He wonders if Jason can teach him a counter again when Du Hian's friends suddenly block his way. He asks them why they're there, but Du Hian answers him from behind. Du Qian explains that he's kind of in a tight spot right now so he needs Si Jin's answer now on whether they will fight or he will collect the money. Si Jin was confused at this sudden change in behavior of Du Hian, but since he already decided on his answer, he doesn't really care when they'll fight. Du Qian starts rummaging in his bag which confuses Si Jin, but it turns out Du Qian was just wearing boxing gloves. He tells Si Jin that it's just a precaution, so Si Jin won't die when he hits him. Du Hian asks him if he's ready and then starts attacking Si Jin. Si Jin was in his stance prepared to receive the attack, but Du Hian's fists are so fast that it almost passes through his defense. While he was reeling from the punch, Du Hian followed it up with another haymaker to his ribs. Lastly, Du Hian delivers a fist straight to his face, but thankfully he manages to block it with his arms, which surprises Du Hian. But this just makes Du Hian decide to hit him more as he rains down punch after punch all over Si Jin. Sejin tries to give a punch of his own, but Du Hian calmly ducks and gives him an uppercut straight to his chin. Sejin falls and Du Hian catches him, but it turns out this was a plan of Sejin so he can wrap his arms around Du Hian and catch him. Sejin plans to bring Du Hian to the ground. However, Du Hian hits him again in the chin with his shoulder stunning him, giving Du Hian a chance to put his arm around Sejin's neck. With nowhere to go, Du Hian starts giving him multiple heady punches right to the face. Sejin falls to his knees and Du Hian promises to not bother him anymore as long as he doesn't interfere in their business. As for Hajin, Du Hian admits he feels sorry for her too, but since she seems to be able to recover fully, they should just leave it alone. However, Sejin suddenly grabs Du Hian's leg and yells out that he's not giving up there. Du Hian is surprised that Sejin still has strength, but he also recognizes that it was Sejin's last chance. Du Hian pulls out his leg with his stronger physique and tells Si Jin of the law of the jungle, where the strongest survives. No matter how good the world looks, its nature will never change. That's why Si Jin, who is weaker than him, won't get any information from him. He then delivers a powerful punch to Si Jin's face. To everyone's shock, his punch was blocked by another face, that of a long-haired man. It was the face of Jason Hyung. 
The other gym members laugh at Jason's face while checking up on Si-jen. Meanwhile, Do Hyun is confused how Jason can endure a direct punch from him in the face. Do Hyun's classmates start angrily asking them who they are. One of them pulls one of the gym members by the shoulder, but he suddenly shouts how his shoulder was attacked. He shouts out for someone to call an ambulance. Slowly but surely, people walking by start glancing at them wondering what all the commotion is all about. Meanwhile, Do Hyun's curiosity got the better of him and he asks Jason how he endured his punch. Jason gets confused and simply replies that it was because it was weak. Seeing that they are getting the attention of a lot of people, Do Hyun was about to leave, but unfortunately, the cops had already arrived. At the police station, Do Hyun explains to the police that it wasn't a fight, but they were actually just sparring. After all, he was wearing gloves. The police decide to ask Sejin too, which makes Do Hyun nervous since if he gets a case against him, he won't be able to participate in boxing competitions and even collect the money he needed. He relaxes when remembers how Sejin mentioned before that he doesn't want the police to get involved too. After all, Sejin can't make any hasty statements since he also needs something from Do Hyun. But to his disappointment, Sejin calmly states that he got assaulted and Do Hyun got suspended. A little while later, Sejin is eating noodles when Jason asks him if he's going to keep doing what he's doing and continue fighting anyone related to the case. He points out that no matter how good Sejin is, he can't beat Do Hyun who is already like a professional. He implores Sejin to stop before he gets hurt. However, Sejin rejects his advice and replies that Hajin is still hurting while the guys who hurt him are walking around smiling. Thus, he must protect her with his own methods. Jason accepts his decision and just orders him to run to burn the noodles he ate. Meanwhile, Do Hyun is at home reading a text rejecting him from a tournament because he hasn't paid the participation fee yet and due to his pending police case. A creditor slaps away his phone and starts ordering him around. The creditor laughs at him and tells him that if he works for them, then he won't increase the interest on their debt anymore. He will either work for them or should he introduce Do Hyun's mother, who is shaking in the corner, to a different kind of job. Do Hyun rejects both his offers and instead tells the creditor that he will pay next month their whole debt including the interest. If he fails to pay, then he'll do anything the creditor will tell him to do. That night, Do Hyun goes and meets up with his friends. His classmates apologize for causing him to get arrested. But Do Hyun doesn't care about that anymore and instead focuses on where to get money. He orders them to go collect money and he'll be taking care of Si Jun. But before that, he first plans to take care of the long-haired guy who saved Sij and Jason. At that moment, Jason is all dressed up while being teased by his gym buddies. They ask him whether he has a date or an appointment, so Jason reveals that he's just meeting a former co-worker. Later, Jason is walking down the streets talking to his co-worker on the phone when a guy abruptly asks for his help because his friend is getting beat up in an alley. Jason follows the guy, but who was waiting for him was actually Du Hyun. Do Hyun is angry at Jason for reporting him to the police, so he must teach him a lesson. At that moment, one of his friends swung a bat aimed at his head. Thankfully, it was caught by Jason's friend, a woman wearing a leather jacket. Do Hyun's friend calls the woman auntie, asks her who she is, and tells her to mind her own business. This infuriates the woman, so she hits the guy in the throat and steals his bat. She tells him that bats shouldn't be used on the head, while simultaneously hitting the guy with the bat on his buttocks. She then hits him some more on the back of his thighs. She then tells them that she's just a woman who used to get beaten up when she was young by bullies like them. She points the bat at Du Hyun and his friends and orders them to attack her all at once to make it more fun. Jason grabs the bat and tells her to stop since she might kill someone, but his friend just smiles and points out that there are no CCTVs around. The two start making small talk but Jason gets kicked by the guys who are now annoyed at the two seemingly acting like everything's normal. The woman hits the guy back with a bat. Jun Seok, who is holding a bat, threatens the woman with it, but she just disarms him by hitting his hands. She then brings him down by hitting him on his thighs. She then approaches Do Hyun, the last man standing. Do Hyun wonders who she is since he doesn't recognize any of her moves. He recognizes that if he doesn't do his best, he's going to die. The woman quickly charges in, and Do Hyun meets her with a punch. However, she vaults over him by using his head as leverage. She starts taunting Do Hyun, pointing out that for him, she won't humiliate him but instead directly attacks his body. Do Hyun quickly turns around and delivers a barrage of punches, which she fluidly dodges. When she backs into the wall, Do Hyun perceives that it's his chance to finally hit but the woman just uses a bat instead to block Do Hyun as she ducks under his punch. 
the bat splinters into a dozen pieces while Du Hian endures the pain in his fist. The woman then grabs hold of his arm and pulls him down into the ground and into a hold. She threatens to injure Du Hian's joints, and he quickly begs her not to. He explains that he's being forced to do this, but the woman replies that she has no interest in his story. Thankfully, Jason chops Du Hian in the neck, knocking him unconscious and the woman lets him go because it wasn't fun anymore. Jason then scolds his friend, Shin Su Kian, for scaring the kids. The two lead the place and Jason asks Su Kian if she was able to get the information he was asking for. Su Kian tells her that the investigation data of the assault on Hajin was clean, but she found something else. There were actually two investigation data. One file of the investigation by Detective Jang and another file has already been completed. This makes it seem that the investigation has been already planned from the beginning. Su Hian hypothesizes that someone high up must be trying to cover it up. Meanwhile, someone somewhere, a guy is happily hitting the bloody face of his opponent with his fists. 